and I, I've still, I will maintain until my dying day that it's the aristocracy because the aristocracy has been in control for 2000 years that these, you know, there are people that trace their lineage back over a thousand years and they have so much land and so much money and they report to no one. So I've always, I've always believed that it's members of the aristocracy that, that actually control this whole mess. And yeah. again, it's, it's not any, it's not China's fault or Russia's fault or America's fault. It's, we're all pawns in, in a larger game. It's the grand chess match, you know? Yeah, but I think it's coming to the point where it's coming to the, you know, po- point of popping. I can tell you that. I mean, it is so bad. You know, like, I hate to say it, the last the elections we had. I mean, how can I say this? I mean, uh, I'm not for Trump or I'm not against Trump. I guess I, I, whoever ran for president this last time around, it just made me dreadfully ill. I hate to say it. But I think that the Russians had such a major part of brainwashing and and talk about fake news and all that stuff. I mean, look what happened oh, on yeah. all the, the social media. I mean, during the election time, I mean, Facebook was just like propaganda like you wouldn't believe, you know, throwing dirt uh, against uh, 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 well, Trump I'll give you a better or example Hillary. Even than that. I'll give you an even better example. Within the conspiracy world, right, for years and years and years and years and years and years, everybody would, would post these articles from RT, Russia Today, right? Because these articles from RT, they were always really <clears throat> way out there. You know, Obama plans to take away your guns. He never took away anybody's guns, by the way. But, you know, according to RT, every other week he was planning to take away everybody's guns. Or, you know, Bush, Bush is a member of the Illuminati. And, you know, I mean, all these, like, insane headlines, real clickbait kind of crap. And so I'd go, you know, I used to go every once in a while to various conspiracy kind of news sites and see what was cooking. Because sometimes, you know, there's some, they'll find an article that's actually interesting, but not for the reason I think. And, and I just, RT, 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 RT. And then there was a, there was press TV, press TV, press TV, right? And it got me thinking one day, well, who the hell is RT? Do you know who Russia Today is? Yeah. It's the, it's the, it's the uh, the Kremlin. The Russia Today occupies the same office that Pravda occupied under the Soviet Union. Their their uh, their budget is is actually issued from the Kremlin, and it is personally authorized by Vladimir Putin himself. Press TV, which was another darling of the conspiracy set, that's owned by the Islamic Revolutionary Government of Iran. <laughs> you know. And it was like, you know, you're, you're taking in this news from Russia and Iran. <laughs> it's like, okay, <laughs> you know, I think it has a little bit of a bend. <laughs> well, <laughs> they, you know, they're being manipulated. Yeah, they are. But then, you know, like you have the president says, you know, all the news media is fake. But then what you got out of the Washington, D.C. or your local government is just as fake as what's coming out from the news media. So who do you believe? Do you believe a little bit of both or what? I don't believe any of it. <laughs> I mean, I'll go on I'll go on on a news site, right? And I'll I'll read the news article. And from the news article I try to determine what's really going on. That's what I do. Because if you look at the news article, that there is, there are facts. In most news articles, there are facts. And you take the facts and you add them up. Leave out the interpretation of the, of the writer and just look at the facts. And then decide what you want to decide based on those facts. Because we're all human. You know, we all have an agenda at some level. Right. Oh, I, I have my I own political. So. I, I have my own political beliefs. You have yours. You know, and and that that filters into anything you do. But if if you look at the facts and you apply Occam's razor, which is William of Occam was very wise, and he said the simplest answer is usually the right one. 
So if you look at all the facts and you apply Occam's razor, you usually get some sort of a rational result. Well, right? I, I got to ask you a question. Where do you think it's all heading? Like with our government, uh, the people, I mean, what do you think is going to happen in the next few years? At this rate, it's going. I mean, I mean, are we in a real deep, uh, troublesome uh, state right now? And can it get much worse? Well, no, I don't think it'll get terribly worse. I think it's reached a kind of steady state of paranoia. And, and this is, again, you know, a la the Cold War, when there were commies around every corner. And, and the thing I always laugh about is that there were no commies because there are no communists. I, I defy you to show me a, an actual communist country that's truly Marxist, but there aren't any, <laughs> you know? But I think it's a steady state of paranoia. What does worry me is the, is the, you know, the, dis, you know, the dismantling and the rhetoric around NATO. That, that is a worrying thing, because NATO versus the Warsaw Pact, or basically America versus Russia, that was a kind of steady state Cold War scenario, right? That where, you know, we had detente. We both knew that we could blow each other off the face of the earth, you know, and and we just kind of stuck with that and we could make decisions based on that. It all comes back to something called game theory. And game theory was developed by a guy named Nash. If you've ever seen A Beautiful Mind, it's that Nash, the guy who went nuts. <clears throat> and he, he basically, while he was at RAND, which is a, a government think tank, he, he and another guy had basically taken a poker match and, and kind of distilled it down to a mathematical equation of the probability that, you know, of how a event will play out based on poker. And the way that they kind of modeled it and showed it to people, you know, game theory in action, was something called Fuck You, Buddy. And the, the, game, the game was literally called Fuck You, Buddy. And they would take a bunch of random people at Rand, and <clears throat> one set of people would be a jewelry set of jewelry thieves, and one pe- set of people would be fences. And so the jewel thief and the fence agreed to meet in the desert. To, and the jewel thief would sell the fence, the the jewels. The fence would give the jewelry thief money, and then they would part ways, right? And it came down to what was the probability that the fence would shoot the the jewel thief, or the jewel thief would shoot the fence, or would they both part ways? And what they figured out was that they would not do anything to each other out of fear that the other one would do something. And so they call that detente. So with the dismantling and things like NATO and other stuff, it lessens the the strength that we have for detente. But I think that we're in a a steady state of paranoia. And I think that that's that's critical for the control mechanisms to work. And and don't, don't kid yourself. The Cold War is a good thing. You know, we make a lot of money building bombs and and selling weapons, and, and so do the Russians. And so it boosts up our economies. So, you know, in that way, it's very good. But it, it makes everybody super paranoid. Yeah, but majorly. I mean, let's face it. I mean, pe- uh, yeah. the people I've had on my show, you know, some of them are are actually panicking at this point. You know, it just they don't trust nobody anymore. I wouldn't panic, though, <coughs> for the simple reason that whoever is in con- really in control, beyond the president, beyond you know the parliament, beyond the, these or, you know these constructs of government, whoever's in control, they need things to work, right? Because if there's chaos, then you know there's a societal breakdown. It lessens their control. Oh yeah. It, as long as we're good, we're good little worker bees, and we go to work and and we do our jobs we get our paychecks and we go buy beer and then we watch football as long as we're doing those things and we're somewhat placated then things move orderly yeah i don't know for a while i got a just funny feeling but it's so many things that it's happening now i mean i you know like the you know we're, like i was mentioned earlier like the pole shifts 
Uh, you got uh, Yellowstone yeah. that could blow any time. Pe- that's on people's minds. Uh, you got the fault sure. li- line off of Washington uh, coast and part of California. If that goes, I mean, it's so many, if people are, I got so many more things now <laughs> to worry about than they ever had. And I, and then, you know, I always bring up uh, these FEMA camps. I, I don't understand yeah. why we have so many of them across the country. But again, I, I mentioned the DOD guest and the, the ex uh, CIA agent I had on. There's a lot of them in this country, you know. It's, it can hold tens of thousands of people. Why uh, do they have them? I mean, I why are but there are a lot of them everywhere? Yeah, and it, 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 they're not just here; they're everywhere. Yeah, and why would they have them? That's that's the scary part. You I, want my theory? I, I will. I can hear it. Yeah, I want to. I always want to hear somebody's theory on it. Okay, so th- this is my theory. So this, I think we talked about this the last time. I was on. So there, so in 1977, there was a show, Alternative Three, and Alternative Three was a was a mockumentary that if you watch it, you know you'll see people in it. You'll be like, I recognize that guy. He was in you know some movie, and it's true. They're all actors. It's all BS. But um, fundamentally, the facts of the show are true. And so the idea was this: is that <clears throat> we're we're cruising toward a meltdown. Whether it's a it's an ecological meltdown, it's something greater than you not liking the president. It's it's like there's an ecological collapse or there's a meteor strike or something large, like world worldwide. Okay. And <clears throat> and so in the in the show they talked about an ecological collapse. That that we and it was made in the seventy seven, so you're you know, you're thinking of the oil embargo and a lot of, you know, a lot of problems at that time around environmental problems at that time. You know, a lot of famine and other things was happening in the late 70s. And so the idea was, is that there's going to be some sort of ecological collapse. And the really rich, powerful people. Well, okay, so they, they thought, because it's an ecological collapse, they, they had three plant, three alternatives to try to fix it. One was to blow a hole in the upper atmosphere and vent the carbon dioxide into space. They tried that. It didn't work. The second one was to build bunkers to hide, and you couldn't build enough bunkers for enough people, so that wasn't uh, feasible, right? You can still do it, but not enough people can hide in the bunkers for a couple of years. The third alternative was to go to Mars by way of the moon, and the idea was is that all the rich people and powerful people and important people you know, artists and, and, you know, very important artists, very important writers, left, right, center, doesn't matter. They're all going to get packed up in the spaceships and sent to Mars. So, <clears throat> but, you know, wh- where most people end at Alternative 3 is that. The, the, they're, they are actively building bases on Mars. You know, I wrote a book. There are pictures of the bases. We're not talking like weird you know, kind of like organic looking domes and weird things like that. We're talking like square buildings and stuff. That this is stuff's very very obvious. So <clears throat> the problem was is that that nobody ever seemed to address in the things that I had read that people had written about alternative three was that they never addressed what happens and by the way, I argue there's actually an alternative one point five, which is geoengineering, this idea of chemtrails. And one of the things that, that never seemed to get addressed was, well, what happens to everybody else? You know, that the show talks about the super rich and wealthy and awesome. But what happens to you and me? Right? And well, another thing that people don't really understand. Well, don't or know sc- don't about, scare me tonight because I, 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 I have been up two nights in a row working on my studio. So I've been up for like 48 hours. Oh, this, this isn't scary, is it? No, so no, one of, <laughs> no. So... One of, one of the things that people, people don't generally know is that when you have, it's called the Venus syndrome, right? That when you have a, a runaway greenhouse occur, that there's a snapback at some point. It plunges you into an ice age, okay? So <clears throat> basically what will happen is that the, the ecology will slowly start to die off and things will be bad and there will be starvation or whatever, and then at the end of that cycle, the Earth uh, corrects itself because the Earth is a very self-correcting system. And the Earth corrects itself and pivots and says, okay, well, 
I'm going to throw an ice age now, right? Too much carbon dioxide in the air, not enough, you know, uh, 